Welcome back to the Pie Chain Conference, and I'm joined on the main stage with Rodrigo from Hunting Pot. Thank you so much. Take it away. Okay. Thank you very much, Melissa. Hi, everyone. Well, I will share screen. So, okay. Now, can you see my screen? It's okay. Well, hello, everybody. I'm Federico from Hamibot. So thank you very much for the to the team of Training Strategy AA to make this possible. And also I would like to special give special thanks to some of the mentors I have in my, my, my career. I will Mike, Nico Baum, and Arbel, that they teach me a lot of things I will try to teach you today. So uh, this is the agenda for today. We're going to start with an introduction of Hummingbot. Then we're going to review some basics about trading bots, different types of markets and strategies, then we're going to code a simple strategy just to let you know how to code a strategy in Hummingbot. And then we have a section for Q&A. So well, let's start with the introduction. Hummingbot is an open source, high frequency trading bot that is built, was built by Coin Alpha, that is a professional market maker. So with Hummingbot, you can code any type of strategies. And how we work, we have official agreements with exchanges based on the trading volume that the users uh, made with Hummingbot, we receive the fee share and we use that money to sustain ourselves. And also we offer bounties in GitHub to solve issues by the community. So the community is constantly helping us to develop the framework. We have integrations with more than 30 connectors of centralized and decentralized exchanges. Uh, well, if you want to try it out, I recommend you to use Hummingbot. So, well, first, Let's review what, which are, what are the training bots and who run bots. Normally, it's common to associate that the people that runs bots are hackers or something like that, but that's not true. The people that runs bots are traders, quant traders, institutions, hedge funds, and all that stuff. And what is a trading bot? A trading bot is a computer program that runs, that loops continually. And normally what it does, it fetches the data from the exchange or from different sources and executes, executes transactions. So, you will, you will, you, if you want to, to make a distinction between Hummingbot and other platforms like Three Commas or Simfix or I don't know the name that CC tweeted on Monday, I think. The main difference is that you, in those platforms, you have to provide your API keys directly to them, and then they, they are going to execute your transactions. In Hummingbot, this is different because you are the client, your computer runs as a client and connects with Binance or Uniswap. You have your own keys. And you can run the bots in your personal computer, in AWS and Raspberry Pi, CCP, or any cloud platform. So well, now let's review which are the most common uh, information that you are going to need uh, when running a trading bot and which are the most common uh, things that the bot has to do. So we can divide information in public data, account data, and custom data. In the public data, we have, first of all, the symbols. This is important because when you are coding a bot, you just want to trade in Ethereum USDT and name Ethereum USDT the same way. And if you check the exchanges, you have, for example, in Binance, if, for example, the, the market if USDT, if is the base and USDT is the quote. So probably they have is if dash USDT. And in another market, you are going to find if slash USDT. So the bot has to know this convention of the, all these exchanges and keep that, keep that information updated. That's already solved in Hummingbot. Uh, this is how you, you and the convention is to use base dash quote. Then you have the trading rules. If you try to send, for example, uh, an order to Binance of, to buy uh, $1 of Ethereum, probably you won't be able to do that because it will say, hey, the minimum amount is to, I don't know, $15. So there is a trading rule specific for, for, uh, for each exchange and trading pair. And Hummingbot gives that information. Inside the trading rules, you have, for example, the minimum amount in base that you can send, the minimum notional size, the precision in, de in decimals. Um, Hummingbot, when you're trying to send an order, it will quantize all the amounts, all the prices. And if you are not, if, if the price or the amount is not enough, it will send you a warning and it won't send the order just to don't have a rejection from the exchange. Then you have to deal with the order book data. Uh, this is very important because, and, and it's a huge difference between Hummingbot and other frameworks because Hummingbot keeps a local copy of the order book 
to make the things uh, easier when you are coding the strategy and also more efficient. Uh, I didn't mention this, but the code of Hummingbot is written in Cython. So it's very optimized and very efficient. And the order book, for example, has a lot of queries that you can use. For example, if you want to know which is the volume of the order book that is below this price, there is a query for that that you can use and get exactly the volume that is uh, below that price. And all those computations are also in Cython, so they're very efficient because you have to loop all over the rows. Then you have the traits, the public traits. The handballs also have the information of all the public traits. Uh, and I, I didn't mention this, but this is updated via WebSocket because if you want to ask that information via REST, you have a lot of latency and you're probably going to trade with not updated information. Then you have also an endpoint to get the last prices. This is via REST too. Um, it's useful if you want to know prices for other markets, for example. And the funding information that is only for perpetual markets that says which is the rate for the next uh, funding and when is the time zone for that. Then you have account data that you are going to have information about your balances, the status of your orders. Also, Heimbold has an order management system that we are going to talk about this in the next slide or the, or the other one. And the private trades that the account executes. And also, if you are trading a perpetual market, you have the funding payments that your account uh, ha, uh, has uh, paid or receives money, uh, depends on the, on the site that you were being at that moment. Also, you can add custom data, for example, Twitter data, custom price source. If you have, for example, a machine learning model that predicts the price and you want to use that price as a source for your market making strategy, you can use that, a Google search, and other custom data. The most common execution uh, things that the bots has to do are placing orders, canceling orders, open positions, and reuse positions. You have a lot of other ones like setting the leverage and all that stuff, but these are the most important ones. So, well, this is just a comparison of what we talked in the previous slide with the Binance UI. So, as you can see, you, you have the order book at the left, the trades that you can execute, the type of orders the public trades, the private trades, the open orders and the funds and all that stuff. And this is the same information that the bots has to keep updated locally to use it in your strategies. So well, this was like an introduction and mostly we talk about our connectors, but how Hummingbird works, uh, we, can, we, we have different objects. The main that you're going to use when you're putting a stra uh, strategy is a strategy. Uh, that is a class that every tick, every tick will uh, has ability to interact with different components. Hamble has a clock that has a list of children that are time iterators. Just to simplify this because it's a little bit technical, the clock will call every tick size. The clock has a tick size by default is one second. So every second it will call a, a method that is C underscore tick. And all the components that are uh, subclasses of time iterators has the ability to, to execute some logic uh, inside that method. So what does mean, what does it mean that you can use you can execute any any logic inside that method and uh, do whatever you want uh, in a sync way. So the connectors are also time iterators, but all the uh, information is updated via WebSocket. But every Two minutes is all uh, requested via REST to update information and trade with uh, the most updated information too. Also, we have an order management system that is related to a strategy because the strategy wants to send an order. If you want to keep track what happens to that order, you, you need an order management system to do that. And it will react based on if you have failure in the market, if the order gets executed, you will keep track of the status of the order. Then also we have some other components like the rate oracle that lets you query prices from these different exchanges or sources that you are not trading on. And other components like, for example, the budget checker that helps you in terms of if you want to execute an order in the market, it will check if your balance is enough to do that. And an important thing too is that we have market events or you can call any specific event to react in an async uh, way to uh, some uh, events. For example, if an order gets filled and you would you want to do something, if an order in the market gets filled, you can uh, code a method that will be uh, reacting to that specific 
event. So by default, as I mentioned, this strategy runs every tick. By default, it's one second, but you can uh, reduce it uh, to uh, up to 100 milliseconds. But I don't recommend you to do that uh, to that levels because just to make a, a quick comparison, the Binance API says that the updates via WebSocket uh, have a latency of from 100 to 300 milliseconds. So having a value lower than that uh, to, to run sync code doesn't make sense. So if you want to do something very reactive or very, uh, or very fast, I would recommend you to code an event or code an async task that will be checking the information uh, more frequently than the, the tick method. So this was an introduction of Hummingbot, how the framework works, uh, works at high level. And now we are going to talk about markets and different types of strategies that you can use. So in the market, the type of exchanges we have centralized and decentralized exchanges. And the markets can be spot or derivatives or perpetual markets. So all the uh, centralized exchanges are coded inside a uh, Hummingbot as a, a, and, and they are all in Python, but the, the centralized exchanges has a special component that also is built by Hummingbot that is the gateway. So the gateway is written in TypeScript. Uh, you can use it simply by running the command gateway create in the client. It will push the Docker image of the gateway and it will let you interact with the decentralized exchanges. Also, you can run uh, your the, the gateway without Docker. If you are trying to include a new connector, uh, you can run it and it's inside the code base too. Now let's talk. Oh, I... Now let's talk about uh, the difference between an order book exchange and an AMM exchange. So in an order book exchange, normally the makers are bots. So are the ones that are placing the orders in the order in the order book, and the takers are traders. This is not always 100% like this because a trader can place a limit order, but that's how it works. And that's how, why it changed constantly. And in AMM is different because normally the makers are traders that are providing liquidity to some liquidity pool. And the takers are bots that are doing arbitrage between different pools. And that's how the price can be updated um, because the price of a liquidity pool, at least in a B2 liquidity pool, is defined by the proportion of tokens that you have in, in that pool. So which are the most common strategies that you can run in a high frequency with a high frequency trading bot? Well, the first is pure market making. This is a simple one and the simplest one. And this is what the one that we are going to code in a little bit. So what, what this strategy is doing is placing two orders around the mean price and it will try to capture the volatility with two limit orders. This is a service. The exchange need people or hedge funds that uh, provides this service because they want to they want to have liquidity in their exchange, and normally they pay you for doing this. And to access these kind of contracts, you have to be a hedge fund. Previously, I was working in a hedge fund that we provide pure, uh, market making services, but uh, Heimbot is trying to decentralize this. And we have a minor platform where you have a lot of, uh, of campaigns that we partner with exchanges and token projects that you can provide liquidity and get rewards from providing liquidity. So which are the common risks that you're going to experience when running a, a market making strategy? Well, you have the price risk that is the risk of holding the asset because if you, have, if you want to place two orders, you have to have the base and the quote in your inventory and the base if you are, for example, trading ETH, USDT, Ethereum, uh, the price can vary a lot. So this is a risk and uh, uh, how to mitigate this, you can do it with options, or for example, you can place short to uh, hedge your position. This is not so easy. You have to work a lot of in, in this because uh, hedging also includes a cost that is a funding and you have to have another bot that will be checking your balance and your execution in the market. Also, we have inventory risk because as we mentioned, you're placing two orders at the same time. Suppose that a buy order gets executed. Then you place another two orders and the uh, buy order gets executed again. So you're going to change the ratio of your inventory 
and that will be a risk too because you are going to be more exposed than before. Okay, then we have arbitrage. The arbitrage strategy is trying to capture inefficiencies between markets. This is very difficult to find because as you can see in the, in the, in the picture, you have to, one market has to cross, the bid has to cross the ask of the other market. I saw a lot of YouTube videos that said that are, you can arbitrage between exchange sheets, but this is very difficult and, and, and it's not so common to find these kinds of strategies, uh, to, to opportun these opportunities. The risk of, of these kinds of strategies is price risk because uh, you're going to hold the same inventory all the time. Then we have cross exchange market making. This is one of my favorite ones because it's a mix between market making and arbitrage. And the idea below uh, behind this strategy is to find a market with low liquidity and high spread, another market with high liquidity and low spread. So you are in a, in a certain way, you are like transferring uh, liquidity from, that, uh, from the liquid market to a, a liquid one. And you are market making the, the high liquid one based in two limit orders, as you can see here in the picture. And for example, when a limit order, this sell order gets executed, you go and buy market in the liquid one. So this, the probability of have execution in these kinds of markets is much more higher than the arbitrage. And also it will let you market make in one, in one market. Uh, the only risk here is a price risk because when you are selling, you are going and buying market directly in the other market. So the inventory will remain the same. So, and, and also the arbitrage is a taker strategy. You have to cross the bid and ask every time that you are uh, trading. In this case, it's one limit order and one market order. So it will be, uh, the profit is, will be higher too. The strategy in Texas, uh, are the, 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 the conceptual the, the concept behind this is the same the, the if, if it's a limit order book it's exactly the same if it's a LP no, normally what you're going to find is like a difference of the proportion of tokens between uh, two LPs and in the same chain is a little bit difficult to find these opportunities it's more uh, prob probably it's more uh, the probability is higher if you are doing this into uh, DEXs of different chains. The risk here are obviously the price risk of holding the asset, the rebalancing because you are going to include two chains and the front running because someone can place an order or front run you when you're trying to do this arbitrage. Okay, now we are going to, I'm going to show you how to code in Hummingbot, a simple pure market making strategy. And for this, I also uh, developed this cheat sheet that will let you get started very quickly with Hummingbot and know which are the most common things that, or the most common objects that you can use when calling the strategies and how to access uh, the, the, the information that you need. So this is a cheat sheet is in, in our, if you go in Discord, you are going to find it or in our web page too. So well, let me open PyCharm. Okay, this is a Hummingbot uh, repository. The script, uh, we are, I'm going to code a script that is going to be, it, going to be a pure market making strategy. So if you want to call a script, it has to be inside this scripts folder. So it's easy as adding one script here. We are going to add a Python file here. Let's call PMM. And let me zoom this a little bit. Okay. So the way to define this is we have to create a class. Let's call, let's call it a, pure market making. It has to be a subclass of script strategy base, like this. All the configuration of the scripts are defined in, as class variable. So for example, in this case, we're going to need the bid spread. For example, will be 0 0.05, ask spread, Maybe 0.05, then you can tweak it. This is, this is just an example. Then we're going to use an order refresh time. This will be the, uh, how many seconds we want to refresh our orders. Then the order amount that we're going to use, for example, 0 0.1. We're going to trade ETH now, it's just an example. So we're going to create another variable that will be create timestamp. We're going to define this as zero. Then we're going to update it. The trading pair, this will be 
ETH USDT, the exchange, we're going to use, in this case, Binance. But if you don't want to trade with real money, we have a paper trade mode, that is this paper trade. Uh, you have like an, a fake uh, balance and the paper trade class is very good because it's using the order book and the trades to compute if your an order is, is executed in the market or not. Then we're going to define the price source that this can be, uh, is, uh, it lets you query different types of, of, of prices. So you can see you can use the mid price, the best SAS, the best bid, or the last trade. In this case, we're going to use the mid price for this. And then this is the, the part when you initialize the markets because it has an init, the, the script search rate has an init that will, create, will initialize all the markets for you. And this is a simplified way of doing this. So in this case, we're going to say that uh, the markets are going to be in this exchange. This, this is a dictionary where the key is the name of the exchange and the value is a set of trading pairs. In this case, we're going to use shell one. So it's going to be ETH USDT. If you want to add another one, you can do it like BTC USDT and you will have the two markets available to trade. But in this case, let's use shell one. So as I mentioned, we have a tick method. I didn't import this. So as I mentioned, we have a tick method that is execute every second by default. So the name is on tick, the on tick method. And what we are going to do here is to code the logic that we want. So we're going to say if self dot create timestamp by by default zero, so the first time we will enter is lower than self dot current timestamp. This is a, a, a timestamp that the strategy has. We're going to self dot cancel, cancel. Then we're going to implement the, the methods, but this is what we are going to do. We're canceling all the orders. Then we're going to create a proposal. This will be a list of order candidate. Then we're going to see this is uh, the other the other candidate. Uh, sorry. The other candidate. The other candidate is an object that has the ability to populate the, the order with the collateral that you have available and all that stuff. And we're going to use the budget checker to check if we can place the order. So this, we are going to create a method here that will be self.create proposal. Then we're going to implement all these methods. Then we are going to have this proposal adjusted. Uh, this also will be a list of order candidate. And we're going to self that adjust proposal to budget. And we're going to pass the proposal here. Um, okay. And then we're going to create a method that will be the, this will place all the orders of the proposal adjusted, and we're going to update the uh, timestamp. So it will be self that order refresh time plus self that current timestamp. So this will be the main logic. We're going to check if this the timestamp is uh, enough to cancel all the orders. We're going to create a new proposal. We are going to adjust the proposal. Then we're going to place the orders and update the timestamp for the next uh, round. So let's start implementing the methods. So uh, first we're going to implement the uh, create proposal that will be the one that will, or we can, we can start uh, building the cancel all orders. So dev cancel, cancel all orders. This will be the method that we're going to use. And for this method, we have a, a, another method that is get active orders. So we'll retrieve all the active orders that we have in the uh, connector. So for order in self dot get active orders, and this will have the connector name that is self dot exchange. We're going to loop all over the orders and we are going to say that self dot cancel and to 
set up that console and we're going to select the exchange. We're going to select the trading pair. So it's a trading pair, yeah, trading pair. So order that trading pair and then we have to select the order ID. Order that client order ID. Hanbill has an client order ID to keep the track of the orders. Then we're going, that's, that's the method that will cancel all the orders of the market. Then we have to create the proposal. So dev creates proposal. And for this, we're going to uh, create the reference price. Well, uh, reference price will be equal to self.connectors, self.exchange. With this, we are accessing the exchange class. Uh, I'm seeing that I have only five minutes left, so I don't know if I can, I can finish the demonstration. But if not, what I can do is to, well, I will, I will try to finish. So the, the, exchange, the, the exchange class has some methods to get the, the prices that you want. So we're going to get the price by type and we're going to pass the trading pair and the type that the type that we want that is this price source that we define here so it will be this mid price then what we have to do is to define the buy price that will be a reference price uh, multiplied by decimal because we are using money so we have to have very good precision one minus self dot bid spread. And then we have to, the sell price will be the same, will be the reference price decimal. But in this case, one plus self dot ask spread. And then we have to define the order. So it will be by order, will be the order candidate. And here we have to create the order candidate object. That will be a trading pair, sell that trading pair. Let me trading pair. Then if it's maker, it's going to be true. Order type is going to be order type limit. Order side, this case will be trade type by. This is how we you can define the trade types that you're going to use. Then we have to define the amount that also has to be decimal. It will be self decimal, and this will be self dot order amount. And then we have the price that this will be the buy price that we calculate. So we have to do the same for the sell order. This will be sell price and try type will be sell. It's just the same. And we're going to retrieve a list of, return a list of this buy order and sell. Uh, this will be sell order. Sell order. Okay, what I can do to simplify this is to don't adjust because I'm, I'm running out of time. So I will remove this and we're going to just place the order without adjusting, adjust them. So, well, now let's create a method that will be place, uh, place orders. So in this case, we're going to, uh, okay, I think it's okay. Perfect. So, well, Let's define the method place orders. This will be self, the connector. We're going to use the connector name. That will be str. And the uh, orders. Now, this, in this case, let's just set the uh, orders. That will be a list of order candidates. Yeah. So what we're going to do is for order in orders self dot place order 
and let's pass here the order that we want to do and the connector. The connector will be able to solve that exchange and the order will be uh, order will be equal to order. And now let's implement this method of place order, def place order. And this will receive the connector that will be an STR and the order that will be a order candidate. So with this, we are going to say now that if order that side is equal to trade type that cell, you will be self dot cell. This is a method that the strategy has. And you have to post connector name is connector. Then we have trading pair will be order dot trading pair. Uh, amount will be order dot amount. Remember that the original uh, the original version will have this. Uh, this amount uh, quantized with the budget. So that's why this is very useful. So the price will also be order that price. And uh, position action is not necessary because this is just a spot market. And then we have L if, L if order that order side is equal to trade type that buy, we're going to do the same, but with a sell with a buy order. So we're going to say buy here, and this will be just the same. So well, as you can see, we coded in 74 lines of code, a market making strategy that you can use to run uh, your, your market making strategy or customize for, a, for, a, for whatever you want to do uh, in the market or providing it with you some exchange. So just to make a quick recap, we are canceling all the orders with this method. This method, we are getting the active orders. We are cancel all of them. Then we are creating the proposal, getting this reference price, that in this case is the mid price, but we can use the last traded price. We are computing which is the buy and sell price, and then we are creating these order candidates. The full version will adjust these order candidates to the budget using the budget checker. But it, there is an example here if you want to see it. And then what are we going to do is to place all the orders in the market. This is a full example. If you want to see it, this is a simple pure market making strategy is doing basically the same. And you have a lot of different examples here. So now let's check how you can run this example. So I have configured PyCharm here to automatically start Hummingbird for me. You have a prompt here. Um, what you have to do once the prompt is initialized, you have to run. If you are calling a Cython strategy, you have to compile. But in this case, that's it's just Python. You don't have to compile the code. So you have to run start script and the name of the script that you want to run. So in this case, we are running the script and you have some commands like status that you can check the status of the strategy. So based on what we, what we code, we have this strategy that is placing two orders. As you can see here, we have the two orders, the buy and the sell order, the prices that you have, the age. Now it's canceling the order and creating two. Now it refresh the orders. So it's working, it's working as expected. So this is basically how you can code a strategy in Hummingbot. It's very easy. I think that the CLI is uh, the, this terminal is very useful because it will let you know the status of your trading bot in these, you can code a custom formal status here to know exactly what is happening with the bot and you can customize it a lot. Just to show you how, what can you do, I have another example here that is this format status example that I am initializing four markets with Ethereum, Bitcoin uh, in these four exchanges. And here I'm coding a custom format status to show the volume that is below certain price in the exchange. So here I have some pandas uh, applying this uh, to all the data frame. And as you can see, if I run this example, start script format, sta 
format status example, it will initialize all the training pairs. And now if I run status live, I can see all these stats in this panel, checking the best as, the best uh, bid, the mid price, and the volume that is below uh, the price Thank that we find in percentage of each exchange. Thank so, you. Well. So, um, actually, it's uh, 25 past, so we don't have too much time. We did have some questions um, on the main stage, but we can direct them to the face to face. Um, okay. Yeah. Sorry, I ran out of time. I <laughs> you, no, no, this is great. Um, um, yeah. so some people in the main stage asking a few questions, but um, yeah, thank you so much for that lively okay. presentation. <laughs> Okay, well, thank you very much. And I hope that you enjoyed it and you can call your strategy in handling bot. Yes, so, uh, exactly. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Well, bye bye. Bye.